Kuzuzampu, you are watching Bhutan This Week with me, Sunam Pim. Our top stories this week. National Zero Poaching Strategy launched to achieve zero poaching in the country. Farmers in Pemagasal disappointed with hazelnut cultivation. And traditional archery style revived after almost two and a half decades. To address the threats of poaching and illegal wildlife trade in Bhutan, the government in collaboration with WWF Bhutan developed Bhutan's National Zero Poaching Strategy. The strategy is expected to help achieve zero poaching in the country. According to Department of Forest and Park Services, though poaching and illegal wildlife trade is the most lucrative illicit economies globally, poaching is not rampant in Bhutan. However, to achieve zero poaching, Bhutan will work to increase the number of rangers and community anti-poaching patrols with improved technologies and equipment. People will be educated on the benefits of wildlife conservation. A lot of uh, intuition from outside and for that reason I think many of the people also get being used as a you know like carrier. Like for instance a very good example is looking at the red sanders which originate from southern India and then it comes all the way to north India, passes through Bhutan into the northern part of the, across the northern part of the country and many of our Bhutanese has been uh, caught in the past being used as a porter to do this. But what is important for people to know is that this is illegal because this is against the law uh, not to uh, have this kind of practices. Along with the Bhutan's national zero poaching strategy, Prime Minister launched Tiger Action Plan and Human Wildlife Conflict Safe Systems Strategy yesterday in Peru. For Sangichosum, Choni Dama for PBS News. People with frozen bank accounts will be able to receive normal services very soon. The central bank last year notified the banks to freeze all Newton withdrawals in exchange for the demonetized Indian rupee notes deposited in their accounts. The Royal Monetary Authority says they are engaged in positive talks with the Reserve Bank of India. RMA had earlier hoped to return the counter value of the demonetized Indian rupee notes deposited in the local banks by January. RMA's Deputy Governor Yang Chen Sogel said they held a meeting with their Indian counterparts in February and the talks went very well. She added that RBI officials from India are now expected to come to the capital next week. She said a positive outcome is expected from the visit. Almost 1.7 billion demonetized Indian rupee notes were deposited with the local banks, which are yet to be accepted by the Reserve Bank of India. Isha Gelson, BBS News. Dago Gembal Haka under Lango Gewak in Paro was razed to the ground by a fire recently. The owner of the temple said Langton in the main temple could have been saved if the Lhaka had a road connection. This morning at around 10.30, Dago Gemba, a privately owned temple, caught on fire. There were four people undergoing retreat in the temple at the time of the incident. The owner of the temple sees carelessness of the people living in the temple caused the fire. I come here every day to do the offering. I came this morning also and checked everything. Everything was fine. There is no chance of starting a fire from an electric circuit. They should be responsible for what happened today. As soon as I saw the smoke, I tried calling them, but they did not receive my call. And by the time my husband and Sokpa run towards Laka, the fire has spread. However, according to eyewitnesses, the fire started from a miniature circuit breaker or MCB. All people residing at the temple said they were not aware of the fire until two men came to inform them. I was with my parents and son. My brother called me and informed me about the fire. I went outside. I didn't see anything. After a while, two men came and then when I went outside, MCB was on fire. No button lamp was lighted. The fire damaged everything along with its sacred relics. 
Many people who came to combat the fire said without the route they could not do anything. If we had the road connection, we could have managed the fire using the firefighter before the helicopter arrived. But all we could do was watch and let Haga turn into ashes. The two firefighter trucks were parked 100 meters away from the temple and were unable to pump water. It was only when the helicopter dropped gallons of water over the burning temple, the fire subsided. Tago Gemba was founded by Father Mpasange in the year 1113, and it was handed over to generations of families. For Sange Chuzum in Paro, Pemanamge, PBS News. Much to the relief of the local residents, the Grade 1 Basic Health Unit in Sarbong will be upgraded to a Zonkak Hospital in the next five-year plan. Residents have been requesting to upgrade the BHU for some time now. The issue was recently discussed in the Zonkak Sogdu. Established in 1963, the Sarbong BHU is one of the oldest BHUs in the country. It receives over 100 patients every day. But with increasing population, locals said the BHU with 10 beds is not enough. During the recent Zonkok Tsogdu, some of the local leaders stressed on the need to upgrade the BHU to a hospital. They said the beds are occupied most of the time. <laughs> The new Zong and the Zongkak court construction is about to start. Population is also on the rise, therefore it would be of immense benefit if the government could upgrade the hospital immediately. Most of the time, our people have to visit Galifu Hospital. People suffering from diabetes and other diseases have to travel to Galifu Hospital for checkup. If the Sarbong BHU is upgraded, we would have access to all these facilities benefiting our communities here. Mr. Silla, the Jibuot in Pasingi, the Jibuot in the Tarin Salo Midisugi, now Shimnale Haching, Achigin Alu, the admit vision. When people as far from Singi Gyog are referred to Gale for hospital from Sarbon BHU, people face problems. Something in the DE session. It is not sure when the construction would begin, but the proposal has been accepted. The Health Ministry has approved to upgrade the Grade 1 BHU to a Zonkak Hospital with 20 beds. The Gross National Happiness Commission has also approved. Recently, an engineer from the Ministry also visited the BHU for inspection. Until then, people have to continue to make use of the Grade 1 BHU in Sarbang. For Kamawandi, Chunijama for BBS News. Farmers of Zobil Gewok in Pemagasal are not happy with the hazelnut cultivation. Even after seven years, there are no fruits. Local leaders raised the issue in the Zonkal Sogdo recently. Mountain Hazelnut Venture started distributing saplings to the farmers in Pemagasal some seven years ago. Most of the people under Zobel Georg started growing the plant. During the time, farmers said they were told that trees would start bearing fruits after three years. But the wait continues. Now, farmers from other Georg have also started cultivating the nut trees. The Zonkak Tsogdu members now want answers. <laughs> They told us that it would be fruiting after three years. Almost everyone started growing it. Now it is over seven years after plantation and there are no nuts. We thought that if it bears fruits within short period of time, we could earn some cash in future. Today it has hampered our cash crops production like cardamom and others. We would have made some income. 
Here in Zofelgyo, hazelnut trees did not give any fruits. Project official said that it would be fruiting between three to four years. Now it has been more than six years, but there is nothing. We don't know why the trees are not giving any fruits. It has been six years now, but no fruits at all. Now people are getting frustrated. The villages are filled with hazelnut trees and they are not able to plant other crops. Is there any compensation for them? We have the annual performance agreement signing and hazelnut trees were cultivated in fertile land. Now they don't have proper land to grow maize and other crops. It might be difficult to achieve anything from the gyok. Trees not bearing any fruits, I think it is like cheating the farmers. The House decided to write a letter to the project for an explanation and the Dzongkak administration will discuss the issue with the Agriculture Minister. For Tiledoji in Pemagatsil, this is Pasa for BBS News. Once a quiet place, Samrang Gewok in Samrup Jonkar is now bustling with activities, thanks to the National Integrated Livestock Mega Farm. The structures are being constructed today. Our reporter Kille Wanchu said locals who had left the Gewok in the past are now returning home. The construction of the mega farm and associated structures is in full swing and it is already benefiting the locals. Some of them are engaged in constructing the farm, earning about 300 ngutam daily. In 2013, Samrang Geok had only 18 households with less than 100 residents. Today, the number of households has almost doubled. <laughs> In the past it was covered with forest, but now with the project, many things have changed. The number of households is increasing every day. I think this is because of livestock mega farm. From just two shops in the past, now we have six shops and a lodge. The agriculture minister visited the area to see the progress of the mega farm recently. And encouraged local residents to take up small farms. Spanning in an area of about 800 acres of land, the mega farm will have fishery, piggery, heifer and buffalo farms, broiler farm and goat farm. The project engineer said the mega farm will be operational by 2018. For Kille Wanchu in Samdub Jonkar, Pub Game for BBS News. The opening of a Desho paper factory in the Lhope community of Doro Khadungkak in Samsi has come as a means of women empowerment. There are four women working at the factory and making a living out of it. 38-year-old Sangi Bida devotes most of her time making tissue paper at the factory. Every day, she works for over eight hours to produce around 100 tissue sheets. For Sangi, the factory, established by Tarayana Foundation, has come as a new lease of life after she got divorced with her husband. <laughs> 
In the past, we did not have anything in our community, so it was difficult to earn enough to feed ourselves. But now things have changed, and I want to thank Her Majesty the Queen Mother for this. Now we can at least earn some income. Although it's tiring working manually in the factory, we are happy because it benefits us a lot. Sangye, along with her three other friends, owned about 100,000 yutam last year. They charge 25 yutam for a sheet of Desho, and every year they receive demands for 5,000 sheets from Tarayana, their main market. Hemadi income generation chelo lo ten de dinu wala de chelo di tab chile de ni ten be dinu chelo gar. Previously, people here were dependent on oranges, but later, following a disease outbreak, the harvest declined. So, since we found Daphne trees available in their area, we thought of utilizing it. People out here collect raw materials for the factory and earn from it as well. It has benefited them. We render support in terms of training programs related to marketing. For now, the women are not able to meet the demand as they do everything manually and a lack of drying machine. The iron sheet they use to dry papers consume more time. However, plants are there to save more for a drying machine and at the same time save themselves from a physically exhausting process. Pudam Chuzam in Samtsi, Sunam Chudin, BBS News. A community radio station for the Lhope community of Doroka was established about a year ago. And today, it has become one of their main sources of information and entertainment. But more importantly, it is helping preserve the community's culture and traditions as our reporter in Samsi shares this story. <laughs> Every day, the service starts as early as 7 in the morning with the station's most popular show, Live Call-In Show. Some elderly lopes, fond of music, come to the station and sing folk songs at the request of the callers. <laughs> In an hour-long program, over 35 lobes call requesting for songs and conveying messages to their loved ones residing within the community. The radio station is very useful, especially for Tsokpas and community leaders. There was a risk of our culture getting diluted. But now, with the facility broadcasting in Lhope language, our elderly people can pass on our oral culture and traditions to the younger ones. With the station, we can listen to the things happening in other places. Now our community is also developing like others. The station keeps us informed about meetings and arrival of important guests. Today, over 70% of the community owns a radio. At the station, two radio jockeys host various programs ranging from announcement to news to interviews. The service is on air daily for three hours. The RJs also hopes are rendering the service free of cost for the welfare of their community. We started with the radio service to preserve the hope culture and traditions. We hope the service will help in passing on the rich culture to younger generations. We also hope it will bring the entire Hope community living in different parts together. The Swiss Development Cooperation, in partnership with the Information and Communications Ministry and Tarayana Foundation, established the community radio station. <laughs> For Damchazam in Samsi, this is Sunampem for BBS News.
After the completion of a parking space in Tashigang town by mid this year, it is expected to address the problem of traffic congestion. Presently, the traffic congestion with limited parking space in the town has become inconvenient for the motorists. Traffic congestion in a cramped Trashigang town is like a problem in any other town. Motorists have been facing difficulty in finding a parking space. I came here for an important work, but I had to turn around for three times in search of a parking space. I could not find one and had to park near the hospital, which is quite far away from here. Parking space is a problem in Tashigang. In Tashigang, we have parking problem, especially for us who drive private vehicles. As for taxis, they have allocated place. Even to do a shopping, we do not get parking. As a result, vehicles are parked along the roadside. The roads are full of traffic and people travel at a snail's pace. For example, the road between the police station and town is narrow and risky. The road has been inconvenient for drivers. The Zongkak administration is carrying out major widening works. Worth over 5 million Yultram, it is expected to be funded through the Zongkak Development Grant, which will be completed by mid of this year. There is a plan to make a bypass near the RSTA office, and they have planned to cover the underneath of the route with soil. However, I suggested creating a parking space underneath the bypass. The parking space will be located underneath the bypass, which looks like a flyover bridge. The construction works are in full swing near the old Bhutan Telecom office. For now, the construction of the bypass will require an additional 12 million Yultram, which has been proposed to the government. Further, the Zongkak has also plans to move the taxi stand near the Road Safety and Transport Authority office. Compiled for Sirinzam in Kanglung, Yishe Galton, BBS News. For the people of Cha and Kawangyewos in Thimpu, this year's Losa celebration saw a revival of one of their age-old traditions. Archers from the two Gewoks participated in an archery tournament that was last played some two and a half decades ago. The game, differentiated from the contemporary archery game by the size of the target, used to be popular in olden days among the people of Wong and Punaka. Pemba, an elderly who is witnessing the game for the third time in his lifetime, says the game used to arouse curiosity due to the target's small size. The target is one foot tall and three inches wide. I first witnessed the game in Punakha. I remember going to the ground early morning and was shocked to see there wasn't any target even though it was a competition. Later, I saw the archers taking out the target from their pocket wrapped in a scarf. It was just a foot long. My father used to say that's how a target of the Wau Valley looks like. Former Changup Ugen said the two-day tournament is a wake-up call for elderly citizens to let younger generations know of the existence of such traditional style of playing the national game. People do not show interest in this style of archery because it is difficult to hit the target. For instance, today's game, as of now, of the 22 archers, only two could hit the target. Despite people's less interest in the game, we are organizing this match after almost 25 years to revive the culture our forefathers left behind for us.
In the past, the game was not just about having sharp shooting skills. It was also about performing rituals to please local deities and garner their support. Elderly people say, during those days, such games were organized to keep away ill luck and to bring in peace and prosperity in their locality. The scarves over there are blessed by the deities. In the past, we used to invite astrologers to the ground and offer marchang. It was for prosperity in the country. In Chia, we please its local deity, Ganchu Gap. We used to take a horse with dancers performing by the side to get him. With the start this time, locals are hopeful of continuing the tradition every year. They say it might just be too late to wait for another two and a half decades more. Poop Game for BBS News. That's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.